The farthest human-made object from Earth is NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, which has astonishingly made its way into interstellar space. Launched more than 45 years ago, this spacecraft continues to explore regions far beyond its originally intended range, long past the expiration of its expected mission life. This remarkable achievement is a testament to the bold ambition behind one of NASA's most historic missions, one that continues to reshape our understanding of space exploration. What makes this story even more extraordinary is that Voyager 1, now millions and millions of miles from its launch point, is still sending back data using technology that's older than a cassette player. Remarkably, in recent times, this decades-old spacecraft has made a new discovery that is captivating scientists and grabbing global attention. The implications of this distant find could extend far beyond the scientific community, potentially offering new insight into our place in the universe. The journey of these iconic spacecrafts began with a groundbreaking moment in scientific history. A visionary at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Gary Flandro, discovered a rare planetary alignment that would allow a spacecraft to visit Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune in a single journey. This cosmic configuration, like a celestial necklace connecting the gas giants with Earth, occurs only once every 176 years. Using just a pencil and the tools of the time, Flandro calculated that if spacecraft were launched within a specific window, they could use each planet's gravity to slingshot forward, dramatically reducing travel time. From 30 years down to just 12. Seizing this fleeting opportunity, NASA launched two identical spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, just 15 days apart in the summer of 1977. Their original mission was intended to last only four years, focused on the exploration of the outer planets. But those early expectations would soon be vastly surpassed. Over four decades later, both Voyager spacecraft are still operational, continuing to send back data from the fringes of our solar system. They've gone far beyond what anyone imagined possible. At the beginning of their journeys, the Voyagers delivered breathtaking close-up images of Jupiter and Saturn's moons. These images revealed active volcanoes, ice-covered landscapes, and dynamic surfaces, transforming what scientists thought they knew about these remote worlds. Voyager 2, in particular, made history by being the first and only spacecraft to visit Uranus in 1986 and Neptune in 1989. It provided the first direct observations of these distant planets, uncovering new data that astonished researchers and expanded our view of the solar system. Despite being roughly the size of a Volkswagen Beetle and more than 14 billion kilometers from Earth, these probes continue to function. Their missions began with a gravity-assisted swing past Venus, an unprecedented maneuver at the time, before making the long journey to Jupiter. Along the way, they had to navigate through the treacherous asteroid belt, a region previously traversed only by the Pioneer 10 and 11 missions. With just 69 kilobytes of memory, less than what's found in most digital watches today, the Voyager computers were marvels of self-reliance. They managed complex operations with minimal resources. Data gathered by their instruments was recorded on magnetic tape before being transmitted to Earth using a transmitter that consumed only 23 watts of power, about as much as a standard household light bulb. To maintain communication over such vast distances, each Voyager was equipped with a 12-foot-wide satellite dish. They used radio waves traveling at the speed of light to send and receive signals. However, the further they moved from Earth, the longer it took for those signals to arrive eventually taking more than 18 hours to travel one way. On top of a, this background noise from modern electronics like TVs, radios, and cell phones has made it increasingly difficult to detect their faint transmissions. Even with these daunting challenges, the Voyager missions have continued to defy expectations.
Their voyage through the interstellar void has brought back data that has changed how scientists understand the universe. One of the most intriguing parts of this journey is their gradual approach to the Oort cloud, a distant region filled with icy, comet-like objects held together by the sun's gravity, extending toward the next nearest star. The real milestone, however, came when the spacecraft crossed the heliopause, the invisible boundary where the solar wind from our sun gives way to the interstellar medium. This crossing marked the official entry into interstellar space. The heliopause was initially estimated to be about 50 astronomical units from Earth. And as the spacecraft neared this region, funding for the mission was extended to monitor what they might find. Unexpectedly, the crossing of this boundary wasn't marked by any sudden change. Scientists had anticipated a spike in the number of cosmic rays, high-energy particles from distant supernovae and other cosmic phenomena. Yet most of these rays were deflected by the heliosphere, the sun's magnetic bubble that shields our solar system. Researchers also expected a noticeable shift in the direction of the magnetic field as the spacecraft left the solar region and entered one influenced by other stars. But no such change was detected. It wasn't until August 25th, 2012, that Voyager 1 officially entered interstellar space. The key evidence came from a sharp increase in plasma density around the spacecraft, confirming the transition. Interestingly, this occurred without a corresponding shift in magnetic field direction, puzzling scientists who had expected a more dramatic environmental difference. This surprising result continues to spark debate and study, offering yet another reminder that space, even when explored for decades, still holds countless mysteries.